Hello, boys and girls of Coloma Community Schools. I miss you. I'm here to read to you today, the one and only Ivan. And I am beginning on page 180. Notice, I don't know if you can see him, I have Ivan with me. Well, what Ivan might look like maybe. All right, um, the top of this page reads, going nowhere. I watch Ruby plod around the ring in endless circles, going nowhere. More visitors have been coming, but not many. Max says Ruby's not picking up the slack after all. He says he's cutting back on our food. <gasps> he says he's turning off the heat at night to save money. Ooh. Ruby looks thinner to me, more wrinkled than Stella ever was. Do you think Ruby's eating enough? I asked Bob. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, though. You're sure as heck painting enough. Bob wrinkles his nose. That stench is unbelievable. And I found yellow paint in my tail this morning. Bob isn't happy about my night painting. He says it's unnatural. Now, while I work at my art, Bob sleeps on knot tag. He claims he prefers her because she doesn't snore. He says her belly doesn't rise and fall and make him seasick. What is this plan of yours anyway, Bob? Bob asks. If you explain it to me, I could help out. He gnaws at his tail. Maybe I could come up with something that doesn't involve you know paint. I can't explain it, I tell him. It's an idea in my head, but I can't get it get it right. And anyway, I'm almost out of supplies. I know, or I should have known, I wouldn't have enough. I kick at my tire swing. It's spattered, it's spattered with drops of blue paint. It's a stupid idea. I doubt that, Bob says. Smelly, yes. Stupid, never. Most, this is bad guys. Most of the day I doze. Late in the afternoon, Mac approaches. Bob slips under knot tag. He prefers to keep a low profile around Mac. Mac's gaze falls on my pool. A corner of my painting is visible. What's that, big guy? He asks. I calmly eat an orange, ignoring him, but my heart is racing. Mac kicks at my plastic pool. Underneath it are all my paintings. Mac yanks out a piece of paper. It slips out easily, and he doesn't seem to notice the other paintings. The page is striped with green, which is what happens when blue paint and yellow paint get together. It's supposed to be a patch of grass. Not bad. Where'd you get the paint, anyway? George's kid? He considers. Hmm, I'll bet I can get 30 for this picture maybe even 40. Mac turns on my TV. It's a Western. There's a human with a big hat and a small gun. He has a shiny star pinned to his chest. This means he is the sheriff, and he will be getting rid of all the bad guys. If this sells quick, I'm, going, I'm getting you some more of that paint, buddy, Mac says. He walks away with my painting. Ruby's painting. For a moment, I imagine what it would feel like to be the sheriff. This is ad. Good news, huh? Bob says when Max out of earshot. Looks like you might be getting some more supplies. I don't want to paint for Mac, I say. I'm painting for Ruby. You can do both, Bob says. You're an artist, after all. While I watch the movie, I try to come up with a few with a new hiding place for my paintings. Maybe, I think. I could fold them once they're dry and stuff them into knot tag. It's a long movie. At the end, the sheriff marries the woman who owns the saloon, which is a watering hole for humans, but not horses. It's been a long time since I've seen a western that was also a romance. I like that movie, I say to Bob. Too many horses, not enough dogs, he comments. An ad comes on. 
I don't understand ads. They're not like westerns where you know who the bad guy is supposed to be. And they're real and they're hardly ever romantic unless the man and the woman are brushing their teeth before they face lick. I watch an ad for underarm deodorant. How do you know who's who if they don't smell? I ask Bob. Humans reek, Bob replies. They just don't notice because they have incompetent noses. Another ad comes on. I see children and their parents buying tickets, just like the tickets Max sells. They laugh, enjoying their ice cream cones as they walk down a path. They pause to watch two sleepy-eyed cats, huge and striped, dozing in long grass. Tigers. I know because I saw them on a nature show once. Words flash on the screen, accompanied by a drawing of a red giraffe. The giraffe vanishes, and I see a human family staring at another kind of family. Elephants, old and young. They're surrounded by rocks and trees and grass and room to wander. It's a wild cage, a zoo. I see where it begins and where it ends. The wall that says you are this and we are that, and that is how it will always be. It's not a perfect place. Even in just a few fleeting seconds on my TV screen, I can see that. A perfect place would not need walls. It is the place I need. I gaze at the elephants and then I look over at Ruby's small, Ruby, small and alone. Before the ad ends, I try to remember every last detail. Rocks, trees, tails, trunks. It's the picture I need to paint. Imagining. It's different now when I paint. I'm not painting what I see in front of me, a banana, an apple. I'm painting what I see in my head, things that don't exist, at least not yet. Not tag. I pull out not tag stuffing, oh, poor not tag. Carefully I fill her with my paintings, hiding them so Mac won't sell them. She's large, bigger than Bob, but I still have to crumple a few of them. Bob tries to settle on her for a nap. You've killed her, he complains. I had to, I say. I miss your stomach, Bob admits. It's so spacious. When Julia arrives, she notices that I've used up my paints and paper. Wow, Julia shakes her head. You are one serious artist, Ivan. One more thing. My finger painting has sold for $40 with the frame. Mac is happy. He brings me a large pile of paper and big buckets of paint. Get to work, he says. I paint for Mac during the day and for Ruby at night. I nap when I can, but my nighttime picture isn't quite right. It's big, that's for sure. When I place all the pieces on the floor of my cage, Side by side, the cement is almost completely covered. Wow, that must be big. But something is still missing. Bob says I'm crazy. There's Ruby, he says, pointing with his nose. There's the zoo. There are other elephants. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? It needs one more thing, I say. Bob groans. You're being a temperamental artist. What could be missing? I stare at the huge expanse of colors and shapes. I don't know how to explain to Bob what, that it isn't done yet. I, it'll, I'll just have to wait, I say at last. Something will come to me, and then I'll know my painting is finally ready. The 7 o'clock show. During the last show of the day, Ruby seems tired. When, when she stumbles, Matt reaches for the claw stick. I tense, waiting for her to strike back. Ruby doesn't even flinch. She just keeps plodding along, and after a while, Snickers jumps onto her back. I lie in my cage with Bob on my stomach. We are watching Julia do her work. 
She doesn't seem to be enjoying it. I can tell because she is sighing more than usual. Again, for the hundredth time, or maybe the thousandth, I wonder what is missing from my painting. And for the hundredth time, and maybe the thousandth, I don't have an answer. Dad, Julia says as George passes by with a mop, can I ask you a question? May I, George corrects, ask away. Julia glances down at a piece of paper. What's the difference between the words spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L and the one spelled P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E. One is principal and one is also principal, but they're spelled different. The first one is the head of the school, the one that ends in P-A-L. Like Mrs. Garcia, or what's her principal's name? <laughs> the second one is the belief that helps you know what's right or wrong. He smiles. For example, it's against my principles to do my daughter's homework for her. Julia groans. If I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, why do I need to know how to spell? With a laugh, George heads off. Poor Julia, I think. Gorillas get by just fine without learning how to spell. All those endless letters, those sticks and circles and zigzags, filling up books and magazines, billboards and candy wrappers. Words. Humans love their words. I leap up. Bob goes flying straight into my pool. A word. You know how I feel about wet feet, Bob yells. Ugh, wet feet. He scrambles out of the water, shaking each foot in dismay. I look out my window at the billboard. I can still hear Mac's voice in my head. Come to the Exit 8, Big Top Mall, and Video Arcade, home of the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. I count to 12, and then I count again, just to be sure. I lay out 16 pieces of poster board, four down, four across, a perfect square. What are you up to, Bob demands? I'm guessing it doesn't involve sleep. It has to do with the billboard. The sign's a monstrosity, particularly since I'm not featured. I grab my bucket of red paint. You're not on the billboard because you're not in the show, I point out. Technically, I don't even live here, Bob says with a sniff. I am homeless by choice. I know, I'm just saying. I study the billboard. Then I make two fat lines, like broom handles. Another fat line connects them. I stand back. What do you think? This is what it looks like. What is it? No, wait, let me guess. A ladder? Not a ladder, I say. A ladder. At least I think that's what they're called. I have to make three more. Bob cuddles up next to Not Tag. Why? He asks, yawning. Because then I'll have a word. A very important word. I dip my fingers into the paint. What word? Bob asks. Home. You guys know how to spell it? H-O-M-E? Bob closes his eyes. That's not important, he says quietly. And that is where we end today. It's been great reading with you. Can't wait to see you again.